okay. No idea. No idea. Okay, well, these are, we were talking about support, right? So these, these guys support the body. We're in that, the, uh, the culinary area of supporting the body. What's, what, what system, organ system is mainly responsible for supporting the body? Skeletal system. Exactly. So we've been investigating the skeletal system. Great. So we talked about osteons and all those other fun things. So today we're going to now move gear, move on. See, this is notes from last time. So we're going to, we have a, a big stretch before the next test. So the next test is on the 22nd of April. So that's about a month away. So we have a big stretch. So we get a lot to cover between now and then. <clears throat> so what is bone primarily made out of? What is, what would be the primary um, component of bone? What would bone be primarily made out of? What, what substance? So when you think bone, you should be thinking calcium, right? So calcium is, is, a, is in the bone. So why is it in bone? Is it just there to provide this hard substance so that you guys can do your jumping jacks? Why would we have calcium in bone? What would be the, is it just for that reason? You could be high, you could do your jumping jacks, and you can kind of kickboxing, right? No! No! That is not the major reason. That's, that's one of the reasons. But also calcium serves as a, a physiological mediator, for instance, in your nerves, in your muscles. They're really, calcium is a very important biochemical that helps a lot of these processes. So it really is a bank. This is a calcium bank, okay? So what's gonna happen is, is that as your body needs to use calcium, you're gonna extract calcium from your bone. So can you make calcium by yourself? No, can't. So it's critical that you get calcium in your diet somehow, but you also need vitamin D, okay? So you, if you want bone health, which is, is really critical, you need bones for skeletal muscle, right? So you really got to take care of your bones. So you, you've got to, of course, put some stress on your bones as well to keep them healthy. Talked about fractures, okay. So now we're going to move into one of my favorite areas of A&P. And that would be something called articulations or joints. So what we need to do is we need to move around. So it's really important that we, our bodies are able to move around. Now, if we had no joints, we'd be like Frankenstein, okay? It would be, even Frankenstein has joints. So if you don't know who Frankenstein is, it's this, creature that lives in, I think, Romania or someplace like that, and essentially it's a incarnate, so it's some creature that was brought back from the dead. So, but Frankenstein moves very stiffly, right? Frankenstein moves like this. If you've ever seen Frankenstein, hopefully you haven't, right? Moves very stiffly. So, but in order to maintain mobility, guys, you need to have healthy joints. And you have a lot of them. The synovial joints, which was one of three types, is the most common. And here, you can do all kinds of wacky things with your bones, but there are junctions with bones, okay? So your elbow, for instance, is a joint, right? Your hips are joints, uh, shoulders. So what happens when you have joint inflammation? What happens when there's a flame flames in your joints. So what happens then? Can you, are you comfortable? Do you have 
easy mobility? No, you don't. Most likely you're going to get signed up for a physical therapist, and the physical therapist is going to be doing all these wacky things to you, and they're going to be doing these uh, movements, okay, pushing. And what they're really doing is they're trying to strengthen and really make the joints more flexible, okay? Because a lot of you don't walk around, okay? Even the, the runners and all these other people that claim to be active, most of the day you're sitting on your duffs, okay? And you are not moving. And what's going to happen eventually, if, even if you put a lot of weight, like here, gravity is not your friend. So if you have a lot of weight, right, and you're slouching and all these other things, you're putting a lot of stress on your joints, okay? And then when you're walking around, if you're not really using your knees, but you put a lot of stress on your knees, you're going to put stress on those joints too. Is stress good? In some ways it can be, but in this case, if it's chronic, you're going to have tearing, you're going to have joint injury, and what is that going to lead to? What is the bottom line? You're going to have joint inflammation. So a lot of people are in pain every day for a long time with joint pain, okay? They take opioids, they have all these creams, they have whatever else, and it's not because their muscles hurt. It is not because their bones hurt. It is because there is some friction or there's some immobility in their joints that's causing pain. You may have elbow pain. You may have shoulder pain. But the localization of your pain is going to be in your joints. So, so musculoskeletal pain really is localized in your joints. So you probably want to now leave this class thinking, well, I want to take care of my joints. I never want to be like my dad who can't move around and he's you know, so stiff he can't even touch his toes, right? You don't want to be that. A lot of young people don't want to be like that. But I hate to say it, but you guys are on, you're taking the night train to being immobile, okay? So then eventually you see 65-year-olds, right, that are completely immobile. Well, not completely, but at least almost, right? They can't bend down. They're like, oh, oh, oh. And they can't get back up. They can't get back up. Oh, it's just muscles. Partly, yes, but a lot of it is you have a lot of garbage in your joints. You can't move f freely. It's really hard. Of course, these people don't have a lot of muscle strength, right? But that is the, the I feel that if you really want to live a life free of pain, guys, physical pain, I don't know, mental pain, I don't, this is not a psychology class, but at least physical pain, I would say you've got to start moving around. You've got to stretch. You've got to really make sure, it doesn't matter what age you are at, but the moment you can't do this, you're in trouble. Okay? The moment you can't, you can't actually put your, can't connect your two fingers to the bottom of your feet with a straight knee. My knee is as straight as I can get it. Okay? And as this has been this way my whole life, right? It's muscles and all that. But my knee is pretty straight, right? But I can connect, right? But what I'm also doing is I'm also using my shoulder muscles too. So you can't do that now when you're 18 to 21. Just, you're not, it's not going to improve. You're, it's going to get worse. So you want to be thinking now, how can I improve my joint flexibility? So because it's going to happen is you're going to get pain. You're going to, you, some of you already have joint pains when you're in your 20s. And that's sad. Well, it's like genetic and stuff. A lot of that can be prevented with stretching, okay? You've got to lose some weight, and you've got to stretch properly. Do yoga. Do Pilates, okay? Do something. But if you're just sitting on your butt all day long on your computer and on your phones, you are going to get stiffer and stiffer and stiffer. I'm telling you that right now, Okay? It's your, this is, it's going to, you're going to have a loose, loose blood flow here. Connective tissue is going to get all calcified. And yes, you're going to be in pain when you're in your 30s and 40s. And will you want to go to work? No. You're going to want to stay in bed all day because it, you can't move around. It's painful, right? So the point of this class is really to 
inform you about health. Why are people in pain, musculoskeletal pain? Why? Why? It's not muscle, guys. I-N-M. It's not muscles. Okay? It is your bones and connective tissue in your joints. There's very little muscles inside your joints, guys. For those of you who had knee injuries, you know this. When you tore an ACL, you know that your knee is just this mass of connective tissue and bone. So what is your knee doing? Well, your, what your knee is doing is allowing, basically, these, this to, to be swiveled, right? You need to have this swivel. What's going to happen with the swivel? Well, you're not going to be able to walk. You need that upward motion, right? You need to move forward, backwards, forward, backwards, okay? Forwards, back. So you need your knee to be working to walk, guys. Okay. So, for those of you who are paying attention, you are going to be totally informed when you get older. Or your parents are um, going to, maybe you can tell your parents what you've learned. Because I know a lot of your parents are probably having pain. They're probably on opioids or pain medications, okay? And it, a lot of that has to do, they have to go to the physical therapist, right? Why do you go to the physical therapist? It's not to get ripped. That's a personal trainer. It is so that you can gain mobility again, okay? Now, if you're in a car accident, of course, you have to learn how to walk again, but that's pretty extreme. But most people that go to physical therapists, they are in pain. They can't move, okay? And they're hoping that they, they, that pain will go away. And it's a lot of work, a lot of work. Good. So we also call these articulations, okay? And all joints do are hold two or more bones together and it really gives the skeleton mobility. One last thing I'll say before I move on is that muscles stabilize joints. So muscles, you have, like, you have very little muscles around your elbow, but it helps keep that, that joint stable so you can do this. Okay? It's keeping that joint stable so it's not like this, right? You're not... Gravity is... You, the, the muscles are keeping the joint stable. Okay? But again, you have very, very little, you have so few muscles around your, um, your actual joint. Now, what, what, what do the biceps do? The biceps cross the joint. The biceps allow the bones to move. You can't, the joints, the, the joints themselves cannot move the bone. But the muscles around, like they're inserted, right, will move this bone, these bones. So you can move bones with muscle, right? But, but the primary job muscle is to move that bone across joints, skeletal muscle at least. So when you're trying to do weightlifting and trying to build muscle, what you want to do is cross that joint with the most weight possible. It's really hard, but you've got to cross that joint for this muscle to work because this muscle is going to cross that joint. Okay? But this is the point of like, Even if you are into exercising, you've got to understand joints because if you don't cross that joint, you're not going to gain any muscle mass. Okay, so if you're doing, like, well, I like to do these barbells, okay, up, like, it's really, like, but I have to cross this joint. I have to go, I have to cross this joint to get shoulder muscles, okay, because it's these muscles that are going to cross that joint, but the joint needs to work. If the joint's not working, I can do all I want. I can be, like, like really, like, buff, like, you know, I would never, ever be able to lift something over my head, and this is just the intro to joints. I love, this is one of my favorite parts of the whole lecture, of the course, is you see these really muscular people. You see them. All you need to do is go to California, South Beach, right? And they walk like this, right? Good luck wiping yourself, okay? It's really, really hard to cross a joint because you have so much muscle here. Of course, the joints are, but it's probably the joints, oh, there's very little flexibility here, right? You have a lot of pure strength. You can but good luck, that guy trying to touch his toes, okay? It's really hard because you have all that mass to cross that joint. But that joint needs, you, in order for you to get there, you need to cross that joint, okay? So you see these people, even like, like this, walking like this, okay? It's not because they have, it's just because they can't cross that joint, okay? So usually it's the elbow. Of course, you have to be, like Vin Diesel, uh, not Vin Diesel, but... Um, 
Dwayne Johnson, he's, he's, he, I think he has a mixture of both, okay? He's a little more flexible, but I, I do know these, like, well, usually these 40, 50 year olds with bad joints that still look like, and they can't, literally, they can't, they can't even bend down, okay? Usually, I hate to say it, but a lot of it has to do with steroids, so um, it's just this growth, like, growth, anabolic. It's complicated, it's not point of this course, but you, what you want to be doing is, if you're an athlete, you should be shooting for flexibility and muscle mass, but not because you, you, you're not going to get maximum motion. So, lastly, Tom Brady is not a muscular man, okay? He's not like Dwayne Johnson. But the guy can throw a football in the fourth quarter after throwing 300 yards with, like, almost 100 miles an hour, okay? It's his flexibility, Okay, he's able to give that force, okay, as, as with just a little muscle mass because he's efficient, but you don't need because you know you can you already have it, but you're able to cross that joint. Okay, this is critical because I don't know how much you're going to learn from now on. You're going to probably get a physical trainer or somebody, but they're not going to really explain to you in detail why joints are important. They're not. At least because it's a non-major A and P class, okay. So, but I want you to leave this 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 lesson thinking, oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. So there's three uh, types of joints: uh, fibrous, cartilaginous, and synovial. Most people know about synovial joints, okay. Synovial joints are the most common. They're elbow, uh, hips. We have very, these. They make up at least probably 90% right, of the joints, but there, is, there are these other two types, fibrous and cartilaginous, right? So there are two other types of joints, so you're going to need to know those. First one is fibrous joints. Um, the, skin, the skull, for instance, has, it, what is a joint? A joint connects two bones. This is bone one, this is bone two. A joint is just this connective tissue that is connecting these two bones. It's giving the skull a little more, it, not much, probably very little, but, um, but it's going to give the skull, if somebody hits the skull, right, it's not going to be this total helmet, like a, a motorcycle helmet. Like if you would ever, if you've ever got into a motorcycle crash, and hopefully you haven't, okay, and you, your helmet's going to be totally gone, okay? If you hit your head, your helmet is going to be like in pieces. Seriously, I've known some people in motorcycle accidents, and thankfully they were on the helmets. That's why you should be wearing helmets, because the helmet's in pieces, okay? And think about the muscle, the, that helmet, right? Of course, they have to go through scans and all that, but it could be much worse, right? If they weren't wearing the helmet, the skull would be in pieces on the asphalt. So you should be wearing, I know it doesn't look cool, right? You don't look cool, but I know in Sons of Anarchy, they kind of wear these, these really non-protective helmets, but at least they wear something, right? So you should be wearing. So if your boyfriend has a motorcycle and you're, he's not wearing a helmet to be cool, you should be telling him that it's, it's a lot, it's not so cool to have his skull fragments on the pavement. But anyway, so your skull, it's a little bit of give here, but a lot of it has to do with evolutionary reasons too. It's because obviously at one point we probably came from some other animal so, um, but that's, that's the, beyond the scope of this course. There's another fibrous joint here. This is a ligament. This is connective tissue in uh, your foot, right? I don't, I don't know what happened to LeBron James. I know they say he sprained his ankle. It's really bad. But most likely he probably tore a ligament in a really fibrous ligament here, and he can't walk anymore, right? There's no stability. He can't do his dunks anymore. I don't know exactly the extent of LeBron's injury. We'll never know what it is. But I can tell you, though, there was some kind of ankle problem. So this is an ankle. In the, is the ankle itself is a synovial joint. But this is just keeping two bones together. You have a fibula and a tibula. Why do we have two bones, right? Why would we have two bones here in the foot? I mean, leg. Why, right? Well, a lot of it has to do with being, like, this is uh, some support, right? And... To be lightweight, we have to move, we have to be quick, right? So it is, I think it, it's at least this back support. So it's going to give a little bit of, of, of aerodynamic 
aspect to, to your running or walking. But again, we can't be moving around these pipes. So we have, and again, I don't know if you believe in evolution, but a lot of this has to do, at one point we probably had four legs on the ground, right? So yes, it's true. So like way, billions of years ago, if you believe in that stuff. I know some of you don't, but at least from my point of teaching is this is how I have to teach you. This is science course, at least, we use evidence. So, but if you, I'm not saying God doesn't exist. I'm saying obviously, but I just think evolution, it, it's a strong case that evolution is a viable theory for how, why we look the way we do. Again, I'm not saying God, I'm just saying that God probably put us in some pot, right? But, um, you, yeah, I don't want to get into any arguments here. But I don't, it, it's at least for its support. Let's leave it at that. But you need to connect these two bones, right? You need to connect those two bones. So cartilage joints, it's a little more like in the spine, hyaline cartilage, right? You're connecting vertebrae. For the love of God, guys, you're not connecting bones with muscle. Please, 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 please don't, don't hurt me, okay? You're not connecting bones with muscle. But muscle just moves bones. But a lot of you are programmed to think that it's all muscles that are connecting bones. No, a joint connects two or more bones together. It's, it's, a, it's connective tissue, that's why it was so important. So you have like 12 vertebrae or so. These need to be connected. You don't wanna have disjointed vertebrae. What's gonna happen if you have disjointed vertebrae? We're almost finished. What's gonna happen if, you, if, you, if your vertebrae are not? connected well your number one is you're not going to be able to hold your head up straight okay so you're going to be probably like because this is what keeps us against gravity okay so that melon you have on the top of your body okay is very heavy it's a bowling ball it really is okay it's really heavy it's full of water or bone Okay, how do we keep it upright? Gravity is not our friend. If I would have a bowling ball here, it's, gravity took it down. But your bowling ball, which is about, this actually is less weight than that, is able to be kept upright. Well, it's muscles. No, it's not muscles. It is your spine. Your spine is very solid. Okay, it's porous here, and it makes it fragile too. But it gives us flexibility too. So we need to be able to, to be a little more stretchy, right? This is not synovia where it's totally liquid, right? This is some connective tissue between vertebrae so that we can have support with all those vertebrae, but yet there is some flexibility, right? So you can kind of take some stress in the spine. You all know, like if I would jump on the ground here, I'm not gonna do it again. People downstairs are gonna think something's going on in this class. But I need to have some shock absorption in my spine because otherwise this thing's all going to crack. And this happens to older people or young people that don't take care of themselves is this fibrocartilage blows out and you are totally, if you take, if you would, if you had blown out fibrocartilage and you did a jump like I did, you'd be going to the ER right now. Okay. You probably have some type of fracture, right? But these are joints. These are, this, these would be a joint. This would be the uh, symphosis joints, okay? And they are cartilaginous joints. And then you have some here in your, um, your, um, your hip area, okay? It's, it gives a little bit of give, but not much, because it has to be firm. You can't have liquid in your spine. You're gonna be one of these, like you, you it, it's impossible for your muscles to be able to support that melon on your head, okay? The muscles are gonna help keep sta the stabilized with posture, right? Like, but it's this here, the, the rigidness that's keeping that melon like this. This melon, believe it or not, there's something in it, not much, but it's really heavy, okay? It's really heavy. So uh, you need to have, but you need to have some give to, for that shock. Same thing here, as well, you don't want this to crack. This, this is brittle bone, we already talked about that. So you need to have a little bit of give right there, right on the bottom there. Okay. 
you don't have to worry about this. Don't worry about that. You're not going to be covered on that. So then here, all you need to really worry about is that there's three types. The types of fibrous, fibrous joints are really these rubber bands. Cartil the cartilage joints is just you have a little liquid connective tissue. And then here you have articular cartilage, and this is really mobile right here. And then you have the plain hinge, pivot, condylar, saddle, and ball and socket, which you've got to know, but it's, it's open book. So this is slightly mo movable, immobile, and then freely movable. Okay. Let's bring us back to where we started. Joints give us mobility. Okay. Well, what they do really is connect two bones. But the, the most common, the synovial, give us mobility so that we can do these really cool things. Okay? I'm using my joints right now. Okay? I am. I'm using all my joints. So if I would have pains, I would not. I would be like... Okay? So even if I would have ripped muscles, if I had some inflammation in my joints, I would not be able to do anything. Because it would really... Do you understand muscles? It would be so painful. Because the muscles will move the bone, but it would be, oh, because you have inflammation in your joints, which is so common. It, it's, I'm telling you right now, this is the most common thing for physical therapists. That's why they're in a lot of business right now. It's because you sit down all day and don't move and eat terrible diets. So um, I love this slide. I wish I had it when I was learning um, a and I didn't. Okay, I just had some crusty professor uh, on a blackboard, okay, and um, it was terrible. So anyway, this is very helpful. So just go with the color here. Um, orange is fibrous, cartilage is blue, and then purple is synovial. Okay. So the class ends at 45 past. Okay. So good 20 minutes. Okay, I get in a few more minutes. So purple would be synovial, right? So hello. I love my anatomy class. I'm not going to use him because he'll probably fall over. But um, in order for this guy to talk, what do you need? You need to have a joint. You do have a joint right here in your skull so that you can say hello to the person next to you. Hello. Hello. Okay. Or more importantly is you can eat because without eating, this guy is going to be unhappy. Okay. So you need to eat, right? So when you're crushing that apple, okay, you are using, uh, you're moving your bones, guys. You are, <laughs> you are moving, and muscles help, right? But, uh, but of course you want to have a healthy area here um, so that you can crush that apple. And people do have, <laughs> um, pain here as well and they can't eat so properly and it's in the joint it's not your muscle it is not your muscles that cause the pain it is the joint and the joint has connective tissue in it that's inflamed okay so then here you have a couple more joints here then you have a few here as well but the skull has this orange this fibrous very you have very little one would be here where freddie's skull basically is glued together Okay. So your arm is basically one big synovial joint. Okay. It's, it's your hands. If you only knew how, what a work of nature your hands are. The only reason why humans have come so far and we're not extinct is because, well, obviously our prefrontal cortex, but our hands, our hands, of course, our communication too, right? But really, but if you think apes can communicate as well, they can. Chimpanzees are very smart, but they're not driving cars, right? A chimpanzee is not driving a car. Well, I saw a video. Well, okay. Well, maybe a really trained chimpanzee, is, but they're kind of below on the evolutionary ladder. But we have these hands, okay? We have these really evolved hands. We can do amazing things with these hands. Okay, we can program, and there's, there's no other creature on this planet with as sophisticated hands. Chimpanzee has them, but they're more for gripping trees, right? But they can't do these, like, really like, fine-tuned 
So, but these are your joints. And I can tell you, your grandmother probably has arthritis. And it's painful. It's not muscles. It is her joints. It is the connective tissue in her joints that are inflamed. And they hurt. You can't do anything. You guys are on the night train to these kind of, you are, all of you. If you don't pay attention, you've got to take care of your hands. You've got to eat right. Well, your wrists too, right? Carpal tunnel syndrome, wrists. It's not muscles. The hands actually have very little muscles in them. They really do. We don't, we have little, little, like little, 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 like strands of muscle. Okay. Well, what about here? Even here, if you think your wrist is not a lot of muscle, you can feel your pulse, dude. Okay. This is a very shallow area. There's not a lot of muscle here. And that's why injury is so common here is because there's not, well, to stabilize, but the bone crack. But if you have healthy joints too, you can actually help prevent some of that fracturing because it'll give, right? You'll have cushioning. So you slip on the ice, you have some cushioning before that bone breaks, right? It, it's not muscle, okay? Please. <laughs> I'm telling you, there are, like, people that are just told it's all muscles, muscles, muscles. They don't know anything about connective tissue or joints, and it's sad. It, it's, it's, sometimes I think there's no hope for the world, okay? And that would be one of the reasons why, okay? Because a lot of people trained in... Even anatomy physiology, if you had your high school anatomy physiology, the teacher just quickly went right through joints, right? Just right through joints. And like, oh, here's the muscles. This is your insertion. Okay, this is your biceps. Okay, yeah. Without a healthy joint, you're not, your biceps aren't going to be able to cross, and you're going to have very little biceps. Okay, but you understand now that there is no muscle in this picture. This is just connected with what? Connective tissue. Connective tissue is not muscle tissue. Okay, here's your leg, too. Your legs are very, I don't know if they're as critical as your hands, okay, in terms of evolutionary survival, but they are pretty important, okay, to get us around and run around, right? But your brain is not basically um, peeling apart an orange with your feet, you can do that it's pretty cool but you're not it's really hard to peel an orange with your feet right because you don't have that the thumb, like the big toes the hallux is not as flexible right but our thumbs you can grab that orange stick your thumb in it and peel it okay <laughs> you're using your, your joints for that okay now here you have some cartilaginous joints here to provide some um but again look at all the purple marks this is a fibrous joint here just for stability we need to move, guys. Human beings are meant to move. This is another sort of health flash, is why are we sick? Why do we have mental illness? It's because you're not moving. Most of Americans now don't move. Human beings are meant to move. And it's proven. I am not this psycho professor saying you're going to move. It is based on how we're built. We have all these joints. I don't count them all, but we probably have at least 20. Maybe more than that if you have two legs and two arms, right? We're built to move, guys. We need to move. You're not moving around. Your brain's going to get all tired, and you're going to get more and more lazy or demotivated. And then it's going to lead to other problems. But if you move, right, if you move, right, if you, if you move right, you're going to start feeling better because we're made to move. Every one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve people in this room, you were designed by nature to move. That's what you were meant to do. Okay, there's a couple other things too, right? But the major, you, you, your body is meant to move. It's not designed to be sitting down all day. Do you understand this? It is not. We were not crafted through evolution for billions of years to sit down and do this all day. So you're wondering why you have back pains, why you have joint pains. It's because you're not meant to do that, brother. Okay, you're meant to move around. Stretch, move. You're starting to get tired. Get off your chair. Get off your couch. Go outside or go wherever you will need to go. Go for a walk. 
people, dog walkers at least have one advantage is that they're forced to go outside and walk that darn dog, right? <laughs> so if your boyfriend doesn't walk the dog, but you do, and your boyfriend's complaining about being tired and irritable, you say you go walk uh, uh, Fido, whatever your dog's name is. I'll, 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 a couple more minutes. But you get my point, is that you, some of you are psychology majors, okay? Well, yes, there's trauma and, and really bad things that happen. I'm really sorry about that. But a lot of therapy could be done with just simple movements, okay? Simple movements. If you have been traumatized, being encouraged to go outside and go for a walk or do some exercise, it'll help your healing rather than just sitting there and laying in bed all day. Okay, because you're meant to move around. I'm no psychology major. I know, I, I don't, I know, I don't even want to think about, it's really sad how this world works with trauma. For, for, I, like I said, I grew, it was on the Connecticut, P, P kids were in jail, okay, P kids parents were in jail. Gunshots, okay, guns, and it was, I could not imagine, but <laughs> just try to move around, okay, it'll help with the healing. Of course, you want to find better I don't know. I'm, I'm not even going to, I'm, I'm just going to stick with my safe anatomy physiology world here. But you get my point is that you're all designed to move around. Okay. <laughs> so these are types of synovial joints. Really fast before we, we stop. Okay. I'm going too fast. I will cover this again next week. Um, I'm not going to, this is one of the most important lectures. You will remember the some of you, and you will hopefully not have to go see a physical therapist. Okay, so uh, the, this is it's a type of joint movement. It's gliding here. This is uniaxial, so it's on a like um, it's one direction. Okay, uniaxial. This is another uniaxial, but this is more rotation. Okay, just think some of you are mechanic types. This is biaxial. It can move in two different directions, and your shoulders, for instance, can move in a lot of different directions. Okay. So we'll talk more about this on, maybe even on Thursday after um, presentations. Good. So we only have 10 minutes left, and I like to do the fruit game. It's really important. Whoever gets the highest score will take home the prize. It doesn't have to be a 10. So please, you'll work by yourselves. It's a lot easier that way. <clears throat> okay, guys, I'm going to have to open it. We have 10 minutes left. I'm sorry. Good luck. Monica, you can also take this from home. Keep going. You can do this more than once, right? You can do this more than once. Class is not over yet. I don't have any tens. I, I'm pretty sure I have put ten questions there. These XP points are going to add up at the end of the semester. So it's really, I really do think you should do your absolute best to get them. It's the only way to improve your grade if you want to or not take the final. Yeah, I would not just stop at that nine, I'm telling you. Let me check. I'm pretty sure. I trust you. Okay. All right. See? The one person was cruising at a nine. They were thinking they're just going to stick with that nine. Then boom! 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 All right, guys. Well, but again, these XPs are the only way to improve your grade. So I want... I, the lead, if there's ever an issue, I'm going to say, well, are you on the leaderboard? Why, why aren't you on the leaderboard, right? So, um, good. So that's all I have on Thursday. Then um, <clears throat> we're going to do the, the, the um, assignments, okay? So be ready.